Hi and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and welcome to my studio and I'll be showing you how I painted this loose watercolour landscape. I'm going to be focusing on painting trees. That's an area that I want to really focus on in 2024, along with skies, and try to see if I can make some progress in improving my rendition of trees in loose landscapes. Um, I'm fairly pleased with these ones, the way they turned out. Um, still plenty of room for improvement. So I hope you'll enjoy joining me in the studio while I practice tree painting. This is a photograph that I used for reference, um, just as a guide, more or less, uh, for the basic colours and shapes. And the first thing that I did was to sketch out the scene onto my watercolour paper. So I've sped it up here, but I'm just using um, a Koenor 5.6mm lead clutch pencil, which keeps me nice and loose. And I like the composition here, which is why I chose this photograph. I have a fairly close-up tree, two trees in the mid-ground and some distant trees, so it's ideal for my tree practice. Also, it's not a sort of really beautiful um, sort of blue sky summer painting. It's quite a dark drab uh, scene, but that makes it very interesting to paint. So here's my simplified sketch. I'm now going to paint the scene wet in wet to start with. So I'm using a large wash brush and I will wet the sky and the land all over. I don't mind if I leave a few dry patches in the land uh, because as I paint the land those dry patches will give me a little bit of variety of marks so some soft and some hard edges. So the first layer will be painted wet in wet so I will mostly get soft diffusions, a soft graduated wash with Payne's grey for the sky. And once the sky's in, then I'll paint in the land, trying to get that dull, sort of strawy, uh, marshy look. And for that, I'll be using raw umber, raw sienna, uh, Payne's grey, and maybe a bit of sepia. Still painting wet in wet, I'll then add some trees, the distant tree line, just with a few brush strokes to suggest them. And then I will start off the tree canopies for my foreground tree and my mid-ground trees using perylene green, Payne's grey and um, raw umber. As I paint in my distant tree line using the same colours as I've used for my ground plane, it's really important that I dab my brush onto a clean paper towel to remove any excess moisture because I want the paint to be slightly drier than the drying sky wash. If it's wetter than the sky wash, I'll end up with cauliflower marks. And now working some darker value across the landscape and then using a very dry, fairly rich mix of perylene green, um, I can paint in the beginnings of my um, tree canopies, which are this lovely, rich, deep bluish green. Um, this rich, dry mix of perylene green and a bit of raw umber in places will softly diffuse on the damp wash, but it shouldn't cause any cauliflower marks because it's a much drier mixture. And because it's much richer, it will stay in place and give me a good base for painting my trees and finishing them off um, painting wet on dry once I've finished this base layer.
So for this tree practice, I'm trying out putting in some branches and trunks of my trees using the palette knife and scraping through the damp paint to see if that works. I'm also now, just before I leave it to dry, dabbing off a little bit of that wash gently with a tissue to add texture and see if that gives me anything. It may work, it may not work, I'm not sure. But always remember, this is practice, this is an experiment, it's not a painting. I don't mind if it doesn't work out. This is fact-finding and learning through trial and error. And the errors that I make are going to be just as important as my successes. So I'm now leaving this to dry fully. And then once it's dry, I can come back and I can work into the painting using the wet on dry method. So wet paint onto the dry painting to bring out tonal values and also to bring out a bit of detail. The first tree that I'm gonna focus on is the foreground tree on the left. So mixing up a dark value of perylene green with a little bit of Payne's grey in it and using a small calligraphy brush, but you can use any small brush um, with a good point. I'm going to just kind of use these sort of calligraphic brush strokes where I just wriggle the brush around over the softened dry wash that I put down wet in wet. And so by sort of wriggling the brush tip around with this darker value paint and painting around some of the lighter value that was created in the wet in wet wash, I'm beginning to bring out some depth and some sort of definition in this foreground tree. Dotting and dashing and little scribbly marks, I can dip into more water to thin the paint down if I need to and dip in more paint as I need to and continue, but working around to those spaces that I've left already in the wet in wet washes um, so that you will see gaps in the canopies. It won't be just a solid green and then the trunk will be painted through that. I'll paint the mid-ground trees in exactly the same way, but with a slightly cooler mix of paint and um, make them slightly less detailed as they're further into the distance.
So you can see that I've just added some very faint detail to the distant trees. A bit more definition, but still keeping it very pale um, so that that keeps that recession. And I'm just going to bed these mid-ground trees into the ground a bit more. I'm very pleased at the way the ground looks. It's just something and nothing suggested detail. Um, and it looks like the rough ground in the photograph, but without being sort of too much trying to sort of imitate that, if you see what I mean. Just creating that impression, which is what you want in a loose painting, that sort of something and nothing. Just a bit darker across this bottom corner I think we'll just balance up the composition a little bit more often a dark shadow from something that's just out of frame of the painting will um, pull the painting together and act as a sort of a framing device for it sort of blending that in a little bit with some scraped marks into that rich dark paint just to add the suggestion of a few little stubby grasses and weeds growing through And I think I'm pretty much done with this as a practice. I've done all I set out to do. So I'm just going to check the composition, see how it looks, removing the tape and revealing the clean white border, which of course always helps us to see the painting with fresh eyes. We can see if we need to make any adjustments. Because even though it is just a practice piece, I think it's still important to sort of analyse it at the end and work out if there's anything that needs doing. I'm just going to soften that paint there a little bit from that um, last brush stroke across the foreground. Just smudge it with my finger a bit. And now for the analysis. I'm reasonably pleased with the way it's turned out. Um, Things I like about it, because it's always good to stick with the positives first, things I like about it is with the foreground tree, I really like the gaps between the canopies um, where you can see the branches and the trunk through and the shapes of the trees I think are quite nice. I really like the distant trees and I really like um, the rough ground plane with all the suggested um, sort of scrubby plants and land. I'm not very happy with the mid-ground trees though. Um, I think they are too similar in tone to um, the foreground tree and I think they need to be a little bit less detailed as they are further back into the distance and they need to compositionally be that sort of halfway house between the detail in the foreground tree and the lack of detail in the distant trees. So I need to work on my mid-ground trees a little bit more and find some techniques to um, keep the painting harmonious but to push it back a bit. I think using paler paint and a little bit less detail would probably work a lot better. Thank you so much for joining me in my studio today for my tree practice and I hope you'll join me again um, when I come back to the studio and share more of my explorations with you. And do please let me know what you think in the comments and while I can't always respond to your comments I always read them. And a very special thanks to all our supporters on our Patreon channels. We couldn't run this channel without you and we really appreciate each and every one of you. And if you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, then please follow either of the links below. So I'm off back to the studio now to continue with some more tree practice and maybe some sky practice as well, and then to begin to work on my own personal projects. So I'll see you again in the studio very, very soon.